Since the advent of the first mass-produced cars over 100 years ago, the automobile has been one of the most important drivers of economic prosperity as it has shaped the landscape of society. However, in the last 50 years, we've seen very few changes to the fundamental process of how car ownership works. But today, we're on the verge of one of the biggest transformations of automotive history, and the impact should be staggering. The automobile is transforming on multiple fronts, and in the process, it's moving from being primarily a manually controlled device to becoming a fully digitally controlled device. And thus, what we saw happen with moving bits of information is about to happen with moving atoms, like people. A few decades ago, moving information was primarily a manual process with printed paper, albums, and videotapes. But with the emergence of web pages, Spotify, and Netflix, most of your information is now delivered through fully digital platforms. And in the next decade, you'll see the movement of atoms, for example, you from your house to your work, also migrate onto a fully digital platform. This is due to three technological advancements that are converging today in a new generation of digital cars. The first is electric drivetrains, which includes motors, inverters, and batteries. These are controlled primarily by software, which can be updated over time to enhance performance. The second converging factor is driverless or autonomous technologies. And while much of the industry today seems obsessed with the idea of self-driving cars, due to regulations, this may be several years away. However, even today, advanced cars can make driving much more effortless and safer, which lowers collision rates and insurance costs, and this technology is rapidly advancing. And the last big feature is two-way connectivity and control. A car like a Tesla has at its core a supercomputer network, which has a cell phone data plan built in. This means you can both monitor and control the car remotely. You always know where it is and how fast it's going, and you can programmatically monitor and even limit its maximum speed if you're loaning it to somebody you don't want driving fast. So today, all of these technologies can be seen in Tesla vehicles, and over the next few years, they'll migrate to every modern vehicle platform. I work at a startup called Testloop, where we've been pushing Teslas to their limits, driving them an average of 17,000 miles every month, and continually pulling data four times a second. After three years, our first car has almost 450,000 miles on it, and it still has five years left on the warranty. We've been sharing data from our vehicles with partners like Farmers Insurance and Goodyear Tires in real time to make vehicle operations more efficient. And this has really opened our eyes to what's just around the corner. For most people today, when you buy an electric car, although you're the recipient of an incredible amount of innovation that provides you with lightning fast acceleration and automatic software updates, the ownership realities of these vehicles are not that much different than 30 years ago. Not only does it cost a lot every month to finance, but you end up paying for it to sit around 90% of the time, and you still need to shop for insurance yourself and schedule your own tire rotations. However, this is all about to change. And the core feature that enables all of this is the connectivity that allows you to remotely monitor and manage the car. Almost all cars have what's called a controller area network or a CAN bus, which enables communication between parts of the car, such as the engine, the airbags, and the brakes. Now with connectivity, your car's data is about to enter the realm of the internet. And this enables a new world of data exchange, and the implications for the automotive ecosystem are expansive. In a connected world, rental car companies can impose a maximum speed on their vehicles, which significantly lowers the risk and severity of accidents. The data can then be shared with insurance providers who can verify that the vehicle speeds are in fact within the prescribed limits and offer lower insurance rates. Tire providers know when a tire needs service by monitoring pressure and odometer data, and when an owner needs to schedule service, they can allow others to see where the vehicle is located. And this doesn't end with tires and insurance. Everything becomes increasingly more efficient once the data from the cars becomes the backbone of an automotive network. Financing can be based on miles driven every month and automatically billed, meaning lower monthly base rates. 
and parking can be tracked and paid with no gates, tickets, or hardware, simply based on monitoring where cars are sitting, how long. For the vehicle owner, a digital record of the comprehensive history of the car usage and even service events can be stored, thus enhancing the vehicle value like a Carfax on steroids. And most importantly, a new dynamic rental car pool, bigger than any rental car agency, can be created by enabling owners to rent their cars to others during idle periods, either while they're working, sleeping, or traveling. They need only indicate when they want the vehicle back. However, to make all of this work, you need a software network in between all the parties involved. And the question in front of us, as we enter the next era of the automobile, is what kind of network do we want to be part of? And what should the key goals of this network be? Well, clearly safety would be the paramount goal. But beyond this, the protection of an individual's privacy, such as their travel patterns, will be critical. And along with this, we want networks that lower the cost of transportation and also make it more environmentally friendly. And further, we want a framework that fosters rapid innovation across many dimensions of the system. Historically, internet services like this would have been developed and deployed in a centralized platform, where some company would create the network, finance and control its development, and then make all the profits if it became popular. However, there may be a better way to organize this. Instead of positioning a company in the middle as the sole owner and manager of the network, my company's goal is to create open source software and an open network that can be used by anybody across the globe to manage vehicles and their interactions. Last month, we released the first open network for connected cars that we call Karmic, and our goal is to show how you can create the type of network that we all want to be part of one that prioritizes the economics and experience of the consumer. Now, in just 90 seconds, any Tesla car owner can connect their vehicle to the network, which will then start receiving the vehicle's data, and this data will be then become the foundation for an increasing number of data-driven services, such as battery monitoring, tire maintenance, parking, insurance, financing, and all of these services will become increasingly more automated and simpler to use over time. And for those owners who want to share their cars with others, it'll substantially lower the cost of owning a car. Now, some of you might be thinking, I'd never let somebody else drive my car. But as advancing autonomous technology starts to prevent most common types of collisions and maintenance issues become rare events, the economics of shared vehicle usage may be too attractive for many to resist. Our hope is that as we sit here on the verge of the next big automotive inflection, New open source and decentralized models will be the ones that gain traction in the market and become the foundation for the dominant networks that emerge. This will lower the risks associated with a single entity that has ownership of the network and ensure that individuals own the rights to their own personal data and have a say in network governance. In this world where car sharing and maintenance is efficient and the value of the vehicle can be programmatically determined at any time, the lines between leasing, ownership, rental, and rideshare will all start to blur, offering a much more flexible situation. If our future automotive networks can effectively balance the benefits of data sharing and transparency with the requirements for individual privacy, on a clean electric platforms, the result will be great for society and our planet. Less pollution, lower travel costs, and significantly less debts and injuries. All in the context of much greater transportation freedom. We couldn't be more excited about the potential for the future of the automobile, and we hope that you might be too. Thank you. <laughs>